If you have an existing business or are starting a new one, you already know that you must have a strong brand to succeed in today's noisy marketplace. While a brand is more than a logo, a strong brand starts with a great logo. But when it comes to logos, there's a lot of confusion about typefaces, fonts, and the law. Crowdspring has helped tens of thousands of the world's best entrepreneurs and small businesses with logo design and other design and naming services. We know a little bit about fonts, typefaces, logos, and the law. Plus, it doesn't hurt that before starting Crowdspring, I was an intellectual property attorney. And in fact, I've had my law degree for the past 22 years. Now, many people, including designers and business owners, do not understand the law governing the use of typefaces and fonts. And others incorrectly assume they can freely use any typeface or font for any project. So whether you're a business owner or a designer, if you want to avoid running into legal problems with your logo, this video is for you. For the next few minutes, we're going to talk about typefaces, fonts, and the law. You're not going to be an expert, but you'll know enough to ask the right questions. So let's get started. How is a font different from a typeface? A font is a computer file or program that informs your printer or display how a letter or character is supposed to be shown, whereas a typeface is a set of letters, numbers, and other symbols whose forms are related by repeating certain design elements that are consistently applied, and these elements are sometimes called glyphs. So a typeface is used to compose text or other combinations of characters. So for example, although many people would call Helvetica a font, it's actually a typeface. The software that tells you to display your printer to show a letter in Helvetica is the font. Fonts, at least in the United States, can be protected by copyright law. Now, copyright is a form of legal protection provided to those who create original works. In the US, the copyright owner has the exclusive right to reproduce, adapt, distribute, publicly perform, and publicly display the work. And any of these lights can be licensed, sold, or donated to another party. And keep in mind that you don't need to register the work with the U.S. Copyright Office for it to be automatically protected by copyright law. So the question is, does copyright law protect typefaces and fonts? Generally, U.S. Copyright law does not protect typefaces. Fonts may be protected as long as the font qualifies as computer software or a program. And in fact, most fonts are programs or software. This means that copyright law, at least in the United States, protects only the font software, not the artistic design of the typeface. Now you should remember that copyright law, and more specifically, as it relates to typefaces and fonts, varies by country. So the US may be the only country in the Western world not to recognize intellectual property rights in typeface design. Germany, uh, in contrast, recognized in 1981 that typeface designs can be protected by copyright. England also allows typefaces designs to be protected by copyright. So the question is, doesn't the US have to follow the copyright law of other countries under international treaties? And the answer is both yes and no. All of the major copyright treaties and agreements to which the US is a party, such as the Berne Convention, operate under a common principle called national treatment, which holds that a country must treat foreigners and locals equally. Now, what that means is that the U.S. is not obligated to provide greater protection to works from other countries than it provides to works produced in the U.S. So the answer may depend. Does this mean you can simply copy typefaces without worrying about copyright law? Now, some argue you can copy a font by recreating it yourself, and as long as you don't copy the computer program, you're not violating the law, at least in the United States. How might you do this? So among other ways, you can lawfully print every glyph on a printer, scan the image, and then trace each image on your computer. None of this would involve copying the software or the program representing the fonts. Now, this issue gets a bit muddled when you consider that fonts are often tweaked and used as part of a larger design. So for example, a typeface may be customized and used as part of a logo design. While the typeface itself is not subject to copyright protection in the US, even if your name is otherwise trademarked, the logo design might be protected as an artistic piece, taking account how the letters are arranged, the use of space, colors, and other creative aspects of the design. And a good example of this is the Coca-Cola typeface. The typeface is protected because it is the logo. 
How about patent law? Does that protect typefaces? And the answer is sometimes patent law protects typefaces. Typeface designs can be patented, but typically they're not. And moreover, even those typeface designs that have been patented in the past were patented a long time ago, and most of them have expired. What about trademark law? Does that protect typefaces? Trademark law protects only the name of a typeface, but not the design of the typeface. What about free or public domain fonts? Can you use those without worrying about the law? And the answer is maybe. So here's the issue. Although many free fonts allow unrestricted use, including for commercial projects, free fonts can sometimes be fonts that are illegally copied. Be careful and make sure that the fonts you're using come from a trusted source and that you understand your rights and obligations. If you're the client, do you automatically get licensed to the font from your designer? Typically, the right to sub-license a font is governed by the end user license agreement for that font. You don't get a license to the font unless the agreement specifically gives you one. This means that sometimes you may have to purchase a license to use the font, especially if you want to use it on other marketing materials and in other places like on your website. Most logo designers avoid problems related to font licensing by converting their logo type to outlines in a program like Adobe Illustrator and sending the client a vectorized outline, but not the font itself. This is what we do on CrowdSpring. And this problem is the reason that we require in CrowdSpring that every designer, when they submit every single logo design, to disclose their legal rights to the design, including whether they use any commercial fonts that need to be separately purchased. Now, I want to cover one other topic related to logos, images used in a logo design. Some logos are only text, others are only an image, and others combine the text and the image into a graphic. If your logo includes an image, be sure it's original and not clip art or an image from the public domain. If your design includes generic clip art or public domain images, you may not be able to trademark your logo. And more importantly, many other businesses probably use the exact same design. You won't be able to stand out and you'll create confusion. And that's why we tell clients to never, ever buy logos at so-called logo stores or on cheap sites from templates. It's also the reason why on CrowdSpring we require 100% custom designs for all logos. Now you know a little more about fonts, typefaces, and the law. But did you know that most business owners make plenty of other branding mistakes? If you want to learn more about branding and the mistakes that will cripple your business, click the link below.